The reality is is now on Patreon, and here are some of our fabulous supporters. Chastity Davis. Don't be fooled by my name. The only thing I abstain from is your bullshit. Jessica Riley. Where I come from, money can buy you anything, but I'll take the garbage plate. Seiran Hayati. In Sweden, we have ABBA, IKEA, and if you mess with me, some other four-letter words. Kelly Payfer. I may be from Down Under, but don't ever underestimate me. Richie D. If you can't be cool, you can't be with Caduce. Megan Shaw. I may be a mom. Model, but I'll never be your model minority. Becca Simon. It gets icy where I'm from, so you know I'll bring the heat. Jill Hirsch. Your petty drama can't take this warrior down. Jamie Allrunner. Where I come from, we're known for our great lakes, but I'm just known for my great ass. Sarah Gibbs. You may not like the cut of my jib, but that's what you get from Sarah Gibbs. Maria M. Where I'm from, they sing God Save the Queen, so I guess you can call me a god. Jill Walsh. I made it up this hill myself, and I'll kick any jack off. Jesse Willis. I may not run in traffic, but I'll give you a run for your money. Eleanor Manning. I run with a fabulous circle of people, and they're not even on my payroll. John Friedman. Diamonds aren't a girl's best friend. John Friedman is. Sarah Watskins Bilstein. Playtime is over. This mama means business. Laura Zielinski. Whether it's breast pumping or fist pumping, this Jersey girl brings the party. Amanda Agosti. Everything is bigger in Texas and my heart is no exception. Tracy Masters. When you're the master of your own destiny, no one can ever take you down. Marl Farsi. Reading is fundamental and in Farsi, the reads are monumental. Tracy Newman. My presence is a gift, so remember the thank you note. Lola Del Rio. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets and I get it all. Ade Adedoko. It may look like I'm stirring the pot, but I'm actually just smoking. Deepa Kanapoli. Some people say I have secrets, but at least they're not federal indictments. Jada. People are intimidated by my great success and my great ass. Naveen Jonathan. I'll give you the shirt off my back and also my unsolicited opinion. Adil Ibrahim. Some things are too hot to handle, like me and the tea I spill. Trinity Subramaniam. I have four degrees and eight syllables and zero fucks to give. Beth Bayer. The secret to my success is staying out of your via Shannon Anthony. There's no fun in moderation, but there's plenty of shade. Rita Ryan. Don't be fooled by my Midwest charm, because I'm nobody's fool. Brianna Tony. Some people strive for perfection, but I'm already there. And lastly, Tanisha. While others are turning tables, I'm dancing on them. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. of the reality is it's always it's newer um i apologize for the list but i have my retainer in and you know it's 9 55 at night i could take it out and i could record it but i am already in my nighttime gear okay i got my pjs on i've got my eye creams on i've got uh, oil in my hair I've got my silk beanie on, not silk beanie, my silk, I don't want to call it a bonnet because it's not really, it's like a silk cap. Okay. I don't have like textured hair like that. So I don't want to say I'm wearing a bonnet, but I guess you could call it a bonnet. I'm in my nighttime gear and I could take out my retainer, but it's, I don't know what it is. It's like once it's off, I'm afraid that I'm not going to remember to put it back in my mouth. So you're just going to have to deal with the lisp. Okay. Anyway. Uh, we are talking about Real Housewives of Atlanta and Love Match Atlanta today, and I actually had more fun watching Love Match Atlanta this week than I did watching Real Housewives of Atlanta. I did. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I love Real Housewives of Atlanta, but at the same time, we spent like 90 seconds, which I know is not a lot. 90 seconds is not a lot of time. We spent 90 seconds... <laughs> With this like ASMR video, like clip of <laughs> Sheree talking about potato chips. Look, I love potato chips, but listen, we were really excited about the iconic return of Miss Joggers herself. And 
all she's given us this episode was laundry and potato chips. Look, if I wanted to watch somebody do laundry and eat potato chips, I would just put a mirror in front of myself while doing those exact things, okay? But I don't want to watch that. Only difference is obviously I don't have a beat base when I'm doing that. But, you know, Sheree, we're very excited for your return. We thought maybe you're going to get some joggers. Maybe you're going to have a relationship. But all we've gotten (laughs) is laundry and potato chips. Come on now. But anyway, let's talk about Love Match Atlanta first. Um, I talk about this every single time I talk about this, this show. I love it. It's so fun. It's so light. Everybody is clocking in. Everybody's ready to work. This episode, it's Shay. It's Shay's time to shine. She is going around making amends. She's going on dates. She's found a great guy named Mark. Uh, I forgot to write down the way that she pronounces his name. Marquette, I think. But she found a great guy, thanks to the duo. I mean, Shay is going around making amends. She goes to another guy's mixer, some guy named Tim, who, <laughs> who's doing like chakra readings or something. You, he, Everybody had to do like a BuzzFeed quiz and then come to the party. And then he read everybody their BuzzFeed quiz results. But anyway... She makes up with Paris there. She's on good terms with Joseph. She's on great terms with the duo. The only thing she has to do now is make up with Ming. And at the end of the episode, she goes to meet up with Ming. They're having tea. And uh, Shay is eating macarons. And Ming is eating sconces. Okay, she loves the sconces. (laughs) She's having tea and sconces. Okay. Um, I love Shay because I do feel like she's so, she's such a breath of fresh air. She's very honest. It feels like she's ready to fight if she's going to fight you. She just seems lovely. And just as much as I adore watching Shay, I cringe watching Ming. Ming is like unbelievably unaware of herself. And, you know, in theory, that makes a great reality TV personality. But I don't know, on this show, it's kind of like married to medicine. Like, I want to watch people who are just lovely and, like, nice and, like, honest. Like, I just never really am on board with a person coming on reality TV when your husband has to have his face blurred out, okay? Let's talk about Ming. Um, I've already expressed my feelings about her problematic name of her company, Colorblind International, but now she also has a seg- a, like a separate sector called Match to Married. And here's where I feel like Ming is trying to really tell people that she's not an escort service because why is Colorblind International not a part of Match to Married? And why is it that she she thinks that people will get scared off by seeing bridal gowns at her matchmaking service. I mean, what is the point of matchmaking if not eventually to be in a long-term relationship with somebody or marry them, right? Like, isn't that the end goal? And if Ming is now possibly for the camera starting to do this thing where she's like, oh, I created a business called Match to Married and I put some bridal gowns in a random office that I rent out, a WeWork maybe, I don't know. Um, it maybe has something to do with these rumors that Shay keeps alluding to, which is that Ming is essentially an escort service. I mean, or Colorblind International is an escort service. Because the other thing I always point out is Ming's clients seem like actors. Now, this man that came this episode, her new client, so hot. Like, what a gorgeous man. His name is Amistad. I'm going to pause there for a second. His name is something else, but he goes by Amistad because he looks like Jamin Hansu, the guy from Amistad, the movie. Is it Jamin, Jamin? I don't know. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. Um, The first thing I thought of when I saw that his name was Amistad was obviously Real House of the Potomac. Okay. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's from a couple of seasons ago. Where Monique, (laughs) I don't know if I should be laughing at this. It feels problematic for me to be laughing at it. Where Monique said Katie looked like Amistad. And then 
that Candace repeated it to Giselle. And then Giselle told Ashley. And then Ashley told Katie. <laughs> and it all came out at the dinner at Candace's house when she flung a butter knife at in the general direction of Ashley. <laughs> I miss those ladies so much, guys. I miss them so much. But anyway, that's all I could think of when this man was like, my name is Amistad. It's not his real name. It's just his, like, I don't know, stage name. So that this is where I'm like, all these people just to me seem like actors. And then even with Amistad, like, the oh, oh I was also was thinking, this is a guy in Atlanta who owns a tailor shop. Is this the, the guy who is Ralph's boy who owns a tailor shop that Ralph rents out? to uh serve his wife crab rangoon in a disney on ice dress is that what is that who he is i i was thinking i needed to google that before i started recording and then instead i did my nighttime skincare routine okay if um if anybody wants to google that and let me know please do okay Anyway, back to me, like everybody that i don't know all her clients just to me seem like actors there's something very actory about her whole setup and even like Amistad went on a date with a woman and they were on camera but nobody was mic'd it was very confusing very very confusing but um it's great it's a great episode everybody seems to be it was kind of like a nothing episode except for just everybody being lovely and hilarious and great and like it seems like maybe they've gotten into the flow of understanding that look you can't ice people out of taping because we're all on the show I feel like that's what was happening before this. And now everybody's in like a great place. Um, I also really love the way they like show part of a date and then they will cut away from that and go to the matchmaker and the person who went on a date sitting together and then they like talk about the date. I don't know. I just, I love that. Oh yeah. She went on a guy on a date with a guy who was like, oh, I have a seven year old and I got her her first gun. Excuse me. What? Sir, you said that on camera? That's crazy. Um, she did not like him, obviously, for good reason. But um, I just, I like the way the show is put together. It's a very fun, light, great show. And everybody just keeps making me giggle. All right. Um, that's it for that show. Let's talk about Rahasa's Atlanta this week. So we opened on just home happenings. Everybody's at home. Candy's teaching her kid Chinese, or maybe her kid is teaching her Chinese. Baby Deuce is burping. And Kenya and Marlo are talking about doing something fun for Sheree. And Sheree is folding laundry in a full beat face and silky pajamas, which I wish I was wearing silky pajamas. I'm not. I'm wearing cotton pajamas. I don't know if this is cotton. Honestly, there's so much stretch in here. It's probably just elastic at this point. But I do love that aesthetic. I love the aesthetic of like makeup and hair done and pajamas. And I know that that's like not a realistic thing because obviously you're going to sleep. You're going to need to wash your face. Okay. But I just love the look. I wish that I could like go outside in my PJs, you know? I think Erica tried to like – I think she came on Watch What Happens Live in like a Versace version of that. And that's not what I want. You know – Oh, I just started watching Real World um, Homecoming, and I started with New Orleans first. But Melissa from Real World New Orleans, she had the best aesthetic. And there's one episode where she's wearing these sort of like really cute silky pajamas. Oh, my God. I just love that look. Where can I get those? Let me know. Let me know if Amistad is Ralph's boy who has a tailor shop and if um, you know where I could get some cute PJs. Also, I'm short. The problem is I want to wear stuff like that, but then I feel like I look dumpy and short. And like, is that a look that could look good on me? But then I saw Melissa from Real World New Orleans wear it. And I was like, okay, well, she's teeny tiny and she looks great in it in that kind of an outfit. So anyway, Sheree's doing laundry. Okay. Long story short, she's doing laundry She's very sad. Her daughter comes in. They're talking about it. Sheree tells us that after the humiliation in Philadelphia, she got a call from Tyrone the next day and he acted like nothing happened. And she basically said she'd call him back and she has not spoken to him since. 
And she tells her daughter that she's not sure she ever wants to talk to him again. She hasn't left the house. And she's just overall sad. But at the same time, she does not want to give up on this relationship. Mm, No. What are you doing, ma'am? Ma'am, what are you doing? Her daughter tells her that if he's going to get a second chance, he better come with it. And I don't know what that means in Sheree's mind. Like, how low does the bar need to be for you, Sheree, to, I don't know, like, give this guy another chance? Like, what does he need to do? Because at this point, he goes to do a national television. Okay. And let's talk about that for a second. Okay. I feel like... The producers had to know that there was no way that this was going to happen. How were the producers on the phone with the attorneys? Like, how long were they on the phone with with the attorneys before they let Sheree know that this man was not going to be coming and having a meal with her? Because, like, Bravo would check with their legal department to see if this is okay, right? Like, They were like, oh, we're on the phone with his attorneys. So they must have been in contact with the attorneys for some time now before Sheree had to wait an hour and 45 minutes. All those scenes where they're like showing Sheree daydreaming about Tyrone talking on the phone, getting collect calls from prison from Tyrone. I feel like Bravo just did that to be like, this is going to be a great place for us to edit in some nonsense. I mean, I feel like a lot of Housewives is like, you know, humor at their expense but like I don't know this one was especially sad and I feel like they knew what they were doing because of this name of this title the title of the last episode which was called she by herself like come on I feel like they had to know that this was all gonna go down but anyway my point is I don't know how low the bar is for Sheree that she would think that this is okay. But we'll get into what else Sheree thinks is okay later on in this episode. Um, Kenya meets Drew for lunch, and Kenya tells us that basically she's hoping that she and Drew can have a great relationship. She feels like she wishes that she and Drew could have had the chance to connect the year before, and such a shame that they couldn't. She says it as if she wasn't the reason for why they couldn't, like, connect. I mean, look, I love Kenya, and I hate Drew. But Kenya, you didn't give Drew a real chance, okay? Kenya is famously not very nice to new people. And that's fine. I think I am the same way too. So, like, game sees game, okay? But Kenya's acting like she wishes she had the chance to connect with Drew as if there was somebody else blocking it. Like, no, Kenya, that was you and Drew because Drew was whack and you were annoyed with her for good reason. But it was your choice. Anyway, they're connecting because basically Kenya is like, oh, you know, we can bond over the fact that she's in a shitty marriage and I'm trying to leave my shitty marriage. (laughs) Oh, no, this scene, they're like bonding. But, you know, she was Drew, loser ass Drew, was on Watch What Happens Live like two weekends ago or two weeks ago. And somebody asked about like, oh, like, you know, what did you think about Kenya um, comparing her relationship with Mark to Ralph? And Drew had the fucking audacity to say some shit like, oh, the difference between my husband and her husband is my husband stayed with me. Um, what? What? Drew is the biggest asshole ever. She's the most, she's like, I don't know, like, God. She's like, she has, she has the gall of like a Jax Taylor, of like a Joe Gorga, honestly, like a Ramona, like, what the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean? First of all, Kenya doesn't want to be with her husband anymore. Okay. She's been trying to divorce this man for like years now. It seems like she fucking hates him. So that's like, what kind of a statement is that to make? And Ralph? Nobody wants to be with Ralph, okay? Ralph is a loser, just like you, Drew. (sighs) Anyway, but Drew and Kenya are having a bonding session at this uh, Korean barbecue place. Kenya orders one of each of the prime cocktails, and Drew is just thrilled to know that Kenya is going to be paying for the bill because Drew's a broke ass, okay? We know that about Drew. 
Anyway, Kenya and Drew talk about Mark in Brooklyn. Kenya tells us that she's working through her relationship with Mark just for the sake of Brooklyn having a relationship with her father because of the trauma that she's gone through with her own mother. She doesn't want to do that to her daughter or make it make her daughter have, I don't know, maybe she feels like in the, you know, when her daughter's older, she never wants her daughter to say like, well, did you ever try? Did you ever try to get dad to see me? You know, I'm sure Kenya understands that feeling because she's gone through it with her mom. Uh, But anyway, they're just, they're talking about all of that, bonding about kids. Uh, Drew tells Kenya that she's grateful for her for speaking up to Ralph and then they proceed to talk shit about everybody on the trip, okay? That's what new people do. That's like a great move to figure out if somebody is a snake in the grass. And you know, Kenya is a longtime player of this Housewives game. And that she's she ropes ropes little Drew in. Candy's talks, she talks about Candy's inappropriate sex toys. They talk about Sonya. Kenya basically tells drew about all of this shit that Sonia was saying about her and uh drew says that Sonia is not loyal and she doesn't have a mind of her own which i didn't understand but basically drew's mad at Sonia. and and here's the thing i understand why drew is mad at Sonia because Sonia did a really shitty thing by sitting with the group and talking shit about drew but i mean look drew Stop acting like Sonia is your friend, okay? Sonia came on the show because she's like a well-known Olympic athlete who, by the way, previously had a reality TV show, okay? Drew is acting like she gave Sonia her job on Housewives and it's absurd for her to expect any quote-unquote loyalty. Anyway, we find out Sonia is having an event that she originally invited everyone to and then uninvited Drew. Or I thought she had invited everybody to, but we find out that wasn't true either. But she uninvited Drew. And basically after this hearty lunch and shit talk session, Drew asks Kenya to unblock her on Instagram. And Kenya pretends like she doesn't know how to do that. Kenya. (laughs) Come on. Anyway, we go to Sonya's Mommy Nation photo shoot. And, um... It's essentially Mommy Nation is a black motherhood blog community. And um, what she's doing is a photo shoot for some of the merch that came out of this blog. And what I see is Sonia is trying to promote her brand. Okay, she's Sonia is basically doing with Candy and Kenya what Drew tried to do with Sonia, right? Like Drew came up with this drop it with Drew. I don't even think it's real, honestly, guys. But she came up, came up, quote unquote, with it. And she was like, oh, we're getting athletes on the show. Cool. We can use them to promote our weight loss stuff. You know, I think that's what basically Sonia was, Drew was trying to do with Sonia. And Sonia said, nope, no dice. I'm not signing off on this. No, thank you. Okay. This is ridiculous. But Sonia is basically trying to do the same thing with Candy and Kenya. I mean, it's no mystery that Candy and Kenya are like the most popular people on the show and so inviting them to be in your merch i mean come on girl on a black friday even if it's a black friday merch it's still we know what you're doing but uh kenya shows up and she's again pretends like she didn't get the memo about things um but really what it is is she's uninterested in doing anything without a paycheck and i don't blame her like you know what i I get why Kenya is annoyed and I would be annoyed too if I was a famous person that got paid to have my name and my picture on things. I would be like, hey, that's an opportunity for me to make a dollar. But at the same time, I appreciate Sonia's sneaky bitch hustle. Okay, she's being a sneaky little bitch (laughs) and she's hustling and I appreciate that. Again, even if it's for a Black Friday sale. Sonia invites the girls to a Jamaican meal with her mom. So this is the second event that she's having. She's having this mommy, mommy, uh, what is it called? Mommy Nation photo shoot. And then she's also um, hosting a dinner. So she's going to have her mom cook for them and teach them how to cook or something like that. And she's going to invite everybody to have a Jamaican meal. I sound delicious. 
And she also says that she's inviting Drew to it because she feels like it's a better place to talk to Drew rather than this event, which was which Drew was obviously uninvited at. Kenya then tells the girls about the Sheree and Tyrone situation. And she tells us that she and Marlo are going to do like a single ladies thing for Sheree just to like pepper up and the marrieds are not invited. Um, then Marlo is at home. We see her setting up some sort of an, the, the home shopping experience for Sheree's lady night, ladies, single ladies night. And we get like a Fendi Batman graphic. (laughs) It was a reach. I was okay. Calm down. Calm down. Editors relax. Anyway, Kenny hasn't come and Marlo calls her cause she's like, where the fuck are you? And she's laid up at home. And Kenya is like, <coughs> I'm sick. Anyway, let me tell you what happened at Sonia's Mommy Nation photo shoot. Would you believe it? Only me and Candy were invited. <laughs> and Marlo's like, excuse me. Excuse me. I called you to see whether or not you're coming. Kenya's like, oh, yeah, I'm not coming. I'm not. I'm not coming. Marlo is basically like, it's sus as fuck that Kenya has a full face of makeup, full glam, and she's not coming. But instead, Kenya sends Drew <laughs> with some pink eggs and cupcake ingredients. Now, Drew is, Drew reminds me, okay, I, I think Drew is such a loser. I think she's so annoying. But at the same time, if you think of it like a sorority, which I was never part of, but I just like watch movies with sororities. And I did watch that show, The Sorority Life on MTV that one season. Anyway, it kind of feels like, Drew is like the little sister. Like she's still rushing. Is that what that's called? When they're like trying out to get into the sorority. Drew feels like she's still rushing. You know, like Kenya's her, if let's say her big sister in this show. And she's like, hey, hey, <laughs> I have a new rush challenge for you. I don't know what those are called. Tasks. What do you do when you're rushing? Challenges, tasks, tryouts, whatever. But she's like, this week, you have to go and do some groceries for me. You have to be my Instacart. I'm going to do an Instacart order. You need to go pick it up and you need to drop it off (laughs) to Marlo's house. And Drew's like, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. Anyway, Drew shows up with her groceries and they talk about Sonia's photo shoot and how they were both not invited to it. And also, at the same time, we're seeing Sonia at the grocery store with her mom planning for this Jamaican meal event. Drew says that she's not coming to the Jamaican meal event because of Sonia's disinvite to the photo shoot earlier. And it's crazy because the first time I ever agreed with Drew, like it blows my mind. Drew, this episode, Drew was very likable. I have to say I do. It's because there was no Ralph. She wasn't trying to shill anything. She was just trying to suck up to every single person. And something about that feels like more natural to me. Like, if you want to be in on the show, just kiss everyone's ass and do it the way you're supposed to. Don't try to shill some sort of, like, MLM bullshit, you know? But I agree with Drew. Why would, if I got uninvited to something and then the next day somebody sent me a group text and was like, can't wait to see you at blah, blah, I'd be like, fuck you. I'm not coming. I mean, obviously it doesn't matter because Drew comes anyway because she's spineless. But I understand why Drew said she's not going to come. And I understand why Sonya is getting so up in arms about it because... It's not like she really likes Drew, so who cares? You're hosting an event for the entire cast, and Mama Joyce is coming. Like, don't worry about Drew. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, while the cupcakes are being made, uh, this is when we get the potato chip ad from Sheree. (laughs) Full face of makeup, same PJs from earlier, eating potato chips. Now, bravo. I won... uh, one, to ask, do you think that we're stupid? But also, two, I appreciate that you don't care. Like, you know that everyone's going to be like, aren't those the same PJs and makeup and hair that she was doing earlier when she was folding laundry? And that scene was supposedly before this Mommy Nation photo shoot and all of that. Like, how, how, you did not, you did not film this over a course of a day. Okay. But anyway, she has full face of glam. You want to talk about, oh, you were in glam, you weren't going to show up? Let's talk about Sheree, okay? Sheree is in full glam. She knew that she was going to go somewhere today. She's eating her potato chips. She tells us she loves the potato chips. I love the potato chips. I get it, Sheree. I get it. But I don't understand what this is. 
Are you trying to show us depression, Bravo? Because I know what depression looks like. Again, it is me <laughs> folding laundry and eating potato chips. And instead of calling out for a dog, I'm calling out to my husband and he's not responding. <laughs> Anyway, Marlo sends a car for Sheree, much like Ralph <laughs> did for his wife a couple of ep- episodes ago before he fed her crab rangoon and gaslit her. But anyway, he <laughs> she sends her a car. She gets dressed up and then she has to put a blindfold on, which is so annoying because you know that she's wearing lashes. That's fucked up. Anyway, Sheree arrives and she and Marlo <laughs> South Africa babble at each other. It made me so happy. You know what doesn't make me happy, though, is I just recapped that episode with Tom Hamlet from Dumpster Dive and my brother on our Patreon. And I forgot that Marlo says a word that rhymes with maggot that episode. Okay. And you have to remember, you're like, oh, by the end of this, you're like, oh, I remember. That's the Marlo. That's the nasty Marlo that we all knew. Right. Anyway, Marlo's little event is great, okay? It's really, really great to have that Fendi shopping experience. There's a foot massage. There's food. There's cakes. Um, Marlo's basically doing her Fendi Connect a favor, okay? (laughs) This in no way is for Sheree, okay? What this is is Marlo saying, hey, Fendi. Hey, my Connect at Fendi. Um, Let's do a home. Not that Fendi needs fucking Real Housewives of Atlanta to like, you know, promote them it's fucking fendi okay if they wanted to be promoted by anybody they would be promoted by karen huger who wears an nd dress but anyway marlo is basically she's got to connect over at the fendi store okay it's this little boy that came and was like hey hey, listen let's do this i'm gonna make this girl spend a whole bunch of money and it's gonna be because i think they make commission and stuff so it's like it's gonna be money in your pocket Honestly, good for you, Marlo. Good for you boosting up your purse and your Fendi Connect over at the Fendi store at the mall. But anyway, she convinces Sheree to shop her feelings away. And somehow Sheree ends up spending $11,000. <laughs> you know, Marlo and Sheree have a heart to heart about Tyrone. And I have to say, in, in this entire scene, when she's sitting and talking to Sheree, she does really seem like a great friend. She seems like a lovely friend, but. Marlo is a snake in the grass, okay? Marlo is an opportunist, okay? Marlo knows how to collect her friends, okay? She knows how to use a situation in her favor. Marlo saw that Sheree was down in the dumps, and this was her way of getting it. And originally, she was going to do this with Kenya, but in this opportunity, she's like, oh, Kenya's not here, and I get to take all the credit for it, and I get to connect, connect with the person who is like, Besides Marlo getting her peach this season, everybody was most excited about Sheree coming back, right? So Marlo is playing the housewife's game the best way that she knows how. And it's, she's coming off, she's doing it by also being very, um, very caring and very sweet. The thing is with Marlo, I don't doubt for a second that she's asking those questions and saying those things and and like she doesn't mean, she means it, right? Like I don't doubt that she means it. She 100% means the things that she's saying to Sheree, but at the same time, if she wanted to rip Sheree apart, she could in a second. While we're in Marlo's house, let me bring up one other thing. Tom Hamlet from Dumpster Dive pointed this out to me a couple of weeks ago when we went to brunch and it is that Marlo in her townhouse has one of those motorized chairs at the bottom of her steps. <laughs> like there's no further confirmation that one would need than the that that Marlo fucks old dudes than a motorized chair at the bottom of her stairs. Why is that there? Why is that motorized chair there? And do I sometimes wish I had one? I do. But I've got an L-shaped staircase and I'm perfectly able, but I'm so lazy. Anyway, um, we go to Sonia's Jamaican cooking event. Everyone and Mama Joyce comes. Um, Sheree is very salty. She's salty about Kenya coming here and not to the event at Marlo's house. Now let's talk about Sheree for a second. 
She's obviously super duper upset about Tyrone. Okay. She's upset about Tyrone. She's upset about being embarrassed. And what is she doing? She is misdirecting her anger at the girls. Okay. She's mad at Candy for not calling and checking up on her. She's mad at Kenya for telling Candy and also not showing up at Marlo's house for good reason, by the way. I, nobody wants to get COVID. They're, they're all looking at Kenya sideways when she's coughing. At the same time, Sheree is like, why didn't you come yesterday? Because she's, look at her. Look at her. She's Flemmy McFlemerson. But they're all getting in, a, they're all going at each other and, it's just very obvious that Sheree doesn't even want to talk to Tyrone. She doesn't want to deal with what's going on with Tyrone. Instead, she would rather lash out on her girlfriends because that is easier to do than facing the fact that Tyrone is a piece of shit. I mean, it's so much like Sheree to do this, right? Sheree always, always, always backs the wrong horse because I do think that Sheree deep down inside, and it's very sad, I think she's very insecure, She's very insecure, and so as a result, she makes these really, really stupid decisions. But anyway, they're all bickering, and Mama Joyce has to interject because everybody is just getting mad at Kenya, and it's it's stupid. Um, Anyway, uh, they all ask Mama Joyce what she thinks, and Mama Joyce says, fuck Tyrone, basically. Okay. She says, Candy's like, I've been through it with my ex in jail. It's just, it's not worth it, Okay. And again, at this point, Sheree is just gushing over Drew. She's disappointed at Candy, but she's gushing gushing over Drew. And again, like, I feel like to some degree she's doing it to piss Candy and Kenya off. But at the same time, it's like, what? Drew Drew showed up and was basically Kenya's task rabbit. So I don't know why you're getting so like, oh, Drew is amazing. Girl, Drew wanted to film a scene. Okay, Drew knew she didn't get to go to the mommy photo shoot. And so she was like, I got to get my scene in. Let me just go to Marlo's house. Okay. Sonia says that she would have liked Drew to be here, but she had to, you know, she understands that. Actually, what did she say? She said something like, oh, I wish Drew was here. You know, I had to invite, uninvite her to the work event. I want to tell Sonia, (laughs) you're all at work right now. Okay, this is your job. This is also a work event. Okay, everything is a work event. Don't think that just because you have a brand that it's not a work event, that only that is that brand is a work event. No, it's all a work event. Okay, even your mom, that you're shilling out your mom and her cooking skills, that's a work event. Okay, you want to bet in like by the end of the season, her mom is going to have like a recipe blog, a book, a hot sauce that she could sell. It's going to happen. And that's fine. You should hustle and use the opportunity the best way you can. But this is all work, okay? Anyway, they get into why Sheree and Marlo were not invited to the photo shoot, and they're all bickering and being mean. Marlo says that Candy doesn't connect with anyone, so it's shocking that Sonia would feel connected with her. And I don't think that Marlo is wrong here, obviously, that Sonia invited Candy and Kenya specifically because they have the biggest following and they're the biggest stars of the show. Hello, of course, that's true. But Marla's being so nasty and so rude. <laughs> After all this commotion, Marlo and Trey just leave and they sit outside and they talk shit. They talk shit about the place. They talk shit about the road. They talk shit about Jamaica. They talk shit about everyone. And Marlo says, Sonia is up Candy and Kenya's ass. Well, Marlo, you were up everybody's ass for years before you became a housewife. What? How dare you? Don't get mad that somebody is going down the exact same path as you. And then she just goes on and on about everybody. She says Candy is money mommy nation and that she is for herself only. And then also that she fucked everyone for free and the pussy wasn't good. And that's why she had to date underneath her tax bracket. Goodness, Marlo, those are some choice words. And what's shocking is that Sheree is agreeing with all of it. And I was like, I really hope that this is bad editing. I really hope this is bad editing because it doesn't make sense why Sheree would be up Marlo's ass for what? For some boxed cupcakes and a foot massage? She didn't even buy you any of the Fendi stuff. Come on. Marlo says that Kenya was a video ho and she went through every rapper in America and none of them gave, a, gave the, her a ring. Okay, well, what about you, Marlo? What do you have to say for yourself? Rented clothes that you rent out and a motorized chair at the bottom of your steps? Come on. <sighs> the episode ends with Drew walking into the event anyway. 
because Drew is interested in filming and showing up to work, and I don't blame her. It's the first time that I've ever, like, not been irritated with Drew. But I think it's, again, it's because there's no Ralph there. It's because she's not... She's not trying to try. She's not being a try hard by bashing people. You know, she's being a try hard by being Kenya's Instacart task task rabbit. But she's not bashing anyone. And I appreciate that. I mean, she does bash Sonya a little bit, but, you know, it's a seniority thing, I think, there. But I don't think that Drew realizes that Sonya is a longstanding person in her own place. And Drew is literally a nobody. Um, that's it for this episode. I feel like my Atlanta episodes, my solo podcasting episodes are usually a uh, a lot shorter, which is fine by me because, um, like I said, I'm already in my nighttime clothes and I'm going to go to sleep right after this. But, um, also because Real House of Atlanta, Housewives of Atlanta itself is just so good to watch that there's actually not like a ton of analysis to be done. It's just so funny. I just am laughing when I'm watching these shows on Sunday night. Beverly Hills, on the other hand, I could talk about for an hour and a half by myself because it's maddening, okay? The latest news as of today is that Sutton was actually pretty racist to the girl she said was Chinese and that was best friends with her daughter. She's actually Korean and she made a TikTok about it. If you haven't seen it, just go on Twitter and look it up. Look up, literally look up Sutton racist and it'll come up. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Um, Mike, try to get somebody else on to talk about uh, Beverly Hills uh, and Dubai uh, for our Saturday episode. And uh, that's it. And I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.